So something I find that is always kind of tricky, especially when you're starting out, is movement and unity. So vector math, physics, um, it can be kind of confusing, rotations, degrees, um, and it's a bit overwhelming if you're new. Just trying to do something really simple, like moving your character around, um, it should be pretty easy. Like you think it should be easy, but it, it, it ended up you just end up burning a whole lot of time on it. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. In this video, we're gonna talk about creating a top-down 3D character movement controller. Um, so basically, kind of like a Diablo style action RPG movement, um, or the kind of movement you see in the top-down shooters where uh, you move the mouse around and you're using the arrow keys and the character rotate and face the mouse. <laughs> But before we get started on doing that, don't forget to subscribe to my channel where I post regular game dev related videos every other Friday. All right, let's get moving. Okay, so let's quickly go over my test scene here. So I'm using a free asset pack. It's the low poly simple nature pack, just so we have something nice to look at here for a demo. Um, and I just uh, threw together this test scene uh, just using some of those models. So we have a basic environment prefab, which is pretty much all of this stuff here. Um, and then I also created a character prefab. So we'll just throw our character on the scene here. And um, this is, you know, just a, a capsule with some basic geometry representing a player. So let's just take a quick look at our player here. So um, he's got a capsule collider and we have a rigid body. So it's affected by physics so that he'll be pulled down by gravity um, but we're freezing the rotation um, and all the axes because we're going to be uh, handling that through a script um, so the only physics we're using for this is basically just gravity so I created a script um, for input so let's go ahead and add that it's called input handler and let's just take a look at this so this is just a very basic script. Um, it gets a vector to input vector and um, a mouse position. Um, so you can see here we're using the legacy input system, um, but I have this as a separate script, so it'd be easy enough to plug into the new input system. <clears throat> but anyways, um, so that's all the script does. So if we hit play now, we'll see um, nothing happens as expected. Um, so we're going to need a script to move our character. So click on our character prefab, um, we'll go to scripts and we'll do create C sharp script and we'll call this top down character mover. And we'll open that up. Okay. So we look at our character prefab we have our input handler we'll need a reference to that so we'll add a private input handler and we'll call it input and then we'll also add an awake function so in the awake we're going to grab a reference to input so input equals get component input handler so basically every frame we need to um capture our input from uh, the movement. So our input axis, so we're, I'm just gonna be using WASD for horizontal and vertical axis. Um, and then we need to move our player. So we'll need a reference to the vector two from the input. So we'll call this var target vector equals new vector three. And we're gonna grab input dot input vector X and we'll give it a zero and then input that input vector y. So we're essentially converting a 2D vector to a 3D vector on two axes. So we're gonna have to do two things um, in our update function. We're gonna need to move in the direction we are aiming. And we also want to rotate in the direction we are traveling. Okay, so let's just break this up into uh, smaller steps here. So let's just create a function and we'll call this move toward target and we'll pass in our target vector all right so i'm going to use intellisense to create the method so generate top down character move toward target okay all right so in our move method we're going to need a way to control how fast we're moving so let's go ahead and make a quick field for that and we'll call it move speed so serialize field private float 
move speed, and then in our move toward target function. All right, so then let's calculate what our speed should be for this frame that this uh, method is executing. So we're gonna go, we're gonna make a variable and call it var speed equals move speed times time dot delta time. So there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, and there's a method on the transform called translate. So let's give that a try. So transform, we'll get a reference to this game objects transform and I'll say translate. And then we'll, we'll pass in our target vector. So the direction we're aiming with our input and then we'll multiply it by our movement speed. So let's go back to Unity and see what this does. So let's go to our character prefab and we'll add a component and we'll add our top down character mover and we'll give it a movement speed of four. So if we hit play and I hit forward, so I'm hitting W right now and you can see he's moving forward and if I hit uh, A and D, we're moving side to side, but you can see this isn't quite right because the way the camera is aimed, you think that if I hit up, I should be moving in this um, this up and down direction, not not forward. So let's take a look at our script. Okay, so translate is not the function we need. So instead, let's just take our current position and figure out which direction we need to move um, by adding our input vector to that. So let's create a variable called target position equals transform position plus our target vector multiplied by our speed. And then we'll say transform dot position equals target position. Okay, let's give this a shot. So back in unit A, hit play. Um, w, I'm still moving the same direction. So we have a very similar result to uh, transform dot translate. Okay, so let's see what's actually going on here. So if I look at my main camera, we can see I'm rotated um, 50, 30, and we'll say zero. Um, so if I put the Y axis to zero, then when I start moving, you can see that as I move uh, up on the Y axis, I'm moving forward and backwards, and this looks like what we would expect. But we want this to be independent of the camera. So I'm gonna stop playing this and I'll reset. So we can see that the camera is rotated on the Y axis, and that's the only axis that's really affecting our movement right now. So if we go back to our script, <clears throat> we need to take our target vector and offset it relative towards the camera. So essentially we need to just take that direction and rotate it 30 degrees because that is what our camera is rotated at. So to do that, um, what we can do is just take our target vector from our input. We can use a function on the quaternion data type to multiply our vector by uh, Euler angles. So to do that, we'll type in quaternion Euler Euler X, Y, and Z. So we're going to need, um, so we want zero on the X. We're going to need our cameras transform and then Z. So we're going to have to add a reference to our camera. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. And we'll make this a property that we can uh, change later to make the script more generic. So we're going to add a serialized field private camera. We'll just call this camera. All right, so down to our move towards target method. Um, we want to grab the Y rotation from our camera's transform and pass it in this quaternion Euler function. And then we want to multiply that by our target vector. And this will rotate our target vector 30 degrees to match what the camera is rotated at. So to do that, we have a reference to our camera. So we'll say camera, game object, transform, Euler angles, and Y. So this will give us our 30 degrees. All right, so now let's see what happens when we go and hit play. 
I have a null reference because I did not assign my camera variable. So let's go to our character prefab and camera. Let's drag down our main camera to our camera field and we'll hit play. And now I'm going to hit W, which is up. All right. So you can see I'm moving in the direction I would expect and left and right and down. Okay. So we have our movement working correctly. So how would we go about to rotate our character in the direction that they're moving? So let's go back to our script. So we have our move toward target. We need to rotate our target in the direction that we're moving. So let's make a method for that. Let's call it rotate toward movement vector. And we'll create a function for that. So because we already calculated what our target vector is in the move toward target, let's change our move toward target method to instead return void, let's return a vector three. And then let's just return our target vector. Since we've already rotated it by the camera's Y rotation. So back in our update function, let's add a reference to that uh, direction vector. So we'll call this var direction, or we'll call it movement vector. Let's call this movement vector equals move toward target. And we'll take this movement vector, pass it into a rotate toward movement vector. So we'll have to add, we'll have to add a new parameter to that method. So I'll go ahead and do that. So we're passing in our movement vector. Okay. We want to rotate our character in the direction that we're moving. And there's a method on the quaternion uh, type that we can use. It's called look rotation. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. So let's create a variable called rotation equals quaternion look rotation and we pass in a uh, vector so our movement vector so what this will do is it'll create a rotation based off of this forward movement vector and then to use this all we need to do is say transform rotation equals quaternion there's another function we can use called rotate towards um, so we'll start with our current transform rotation and our target rotation is the rotation in the direction we're moving, which is our rotation variable. And then we can also pass in a max degrees delta. So the maximum amount of degrees that we can rotate each frame. So we'll just call this rotate speed. And we don't have a field for this so let's go ahead and add that so under movement speed let's add another serialized field private float rotate speed okay so let's go back into unity let's collapse these because we don't need these right now um top down character mover rotate speed um let's just say 15. So at each frame, we can go a maximum of 15 degrees. It might be a little high, but we'll see. Now go ahead and hit play. And you can see as I change direction, my character rotates. Cool. So you can see something kind of weird's happening. Um, so right now he's kind of jumping around and that happens every time I lift up the key so what I think is happening is when I'm not moving we're still reading this target vector as zero zero so when we're not moving we don't want to rotate towards zero zero because we want to stay um, rotated in the direction that we last moved so in a rotate towards movement vector let's just add a quick check for that if movement vector magnitude equals zero, we're just gonna return because we don't wanna rotate. So now if we go back to Unity and give this a shot, cool. All right, so I'm letting go of the keys and I'm not, he's not rotating uh, randomly. So looks like that's working. 
So that's one way to do top down movement. Another popular way to do that is with using the mouse to aim the direction of the character. So a lot of top down shooters have that. So how would we implement that with what we have so far? So we could create another component to do that. Um, but we're actually like 80% of the way there. So let's just modify our current top down character mover script um, to have the option to use the mouse to aim the character. So how would we do that? Let's go back to our script. Let's add a another serialized field and we'll call this private bool. <clears throat> we'll just call this rotate towards mouse. So now if we go back to our update function. You know, I'm going to clean up some of these comments because these methods are very self-explanatory. So in our update function, we want our movement vector. We want to move, um, but we don't necessarily want to rotate towards our movement vector because we want that might be controlled by the mouse. So let's just add a check for that. If rotate towards mouse. So if we're not rotating, rotating towards mouse, we're going to rotate towards our movement vector. And we'll just say else, create a function, um, and we'll just call it rotate toward mouse vector. And I'll use IntelliSense to create a stub for that. Okay, so how do we rotate towards our mouse? So the mouse is based off of the camera. So if I go to game view for a second here, as I move my cursor around, um, we get X and Y coordinates in pixels as to where the mouse cursor is on the screen. So we need a way to transform this into um, a, a world position so we know which way to rotate our character. Luckily, there's a function that'll help us do this. So if we go back to our script, our rotate towards mouse vector, we can do this with uh, array cast. So basically we'll just, uh, from the camera's perspective, you can picture it like a box, right? So we're gonna shoot a ray forward um, wherever the mouse arrow is. And then as soon as that hits a, a piece in our terrain, so like the ground, for example, then we'll have a point of reference to where the mouse is kind of looking down from the camera's perspective, which we can then use to rotate our character towards. So to do that, we'll use a function on the camera, which we have a reference to already. So camera and the function is called screen point to ray and we need to pass in our position of our mouse. So we'll say input mouse position. As you may recall on our input handler, we have our mouse position where we're just reading. Uh, it's a vector three and we're reading from their input mouse position. And we'll need to save this to a variable so we'll say ray ray equals camera screen point to ray all right so we have a ray and we we need to know when it hits so to do that we'll use the physics engine so if physics ray cast and we'll pass in our ray and then um we can choose how far the uh, ray will travel before it it dies um, we can also get our hit info um, as an out parameter. So we're actually going to use that. So we'll say out raycast hit. Let's call this hit info. And then um, let's kill our ray in case uh, you know the mouse goes over where there is nothing and it'll just shoot on forever and uh, just use up memory and whatnot. <clears throat> so let's just say max max distance and we'll just pass in 300 F. So now we have this hit info out parameter um, and then from the hit info we can get uh, things like what collider it hit, how far did it travel, um, its normal vector, but the thing we're really interested in is the point. So what point did it hit? So let's go ahead and assign this to a variable. So var target equals hit info dot point. 
All right, so we have our target where the ray hit. So now let's just uh, rotate our target. So there's a function we can do to make our uh, transform automatically rotate towards a given point. So it's called look at, does exactly what it sounds like. Look at our target. So now if we go back to Unity and we enable our rotate towards mouse checkbox and we hit play, we can see as I'm moving, the character stays looking at the mouse. Um, one thing that's a little goofy though is you can see if I like hit the tree up here, um, he's actually looking up at the tree. Um, and the closer I get, he's, he's on his back now. So that's not quite what we want. Um, and that's because we're looking directly at whatever spot we hit. So let's constrain that to only the <clears throat> the X and the Z axis. So that way the Y axis isn't rotating. So in order to do that, let's just go back to our script. And when we get our target, let's just modify target dot y equals our transform dot position dot y. It's so basically <clears throat> we'll just take the hit point and bring it up to wherever y coordinate our character is currently at. So now if we go back to unity and hit play. All right, moving around and you can see the character is looking at the mouse and he's moving smoothly. And there you go. And now we have a top-down character mover script that you can use. Project and the script will be in my GitHub repo. You can download it and uh, mess around with it, make some tweaks and adjustments, um, or you can use it in your projects, whatever you want. Uh, link will be in the description. So you have it, um, everything we did in this video, you can download from my GitHub repository. Link will be in the description. And if you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below, let me know. Also, if there's a specific question or topic uh, that you would like to see in a future video or would like to see me go into more detail, uh, please leave a comment and let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.